GM. <laughs> okay, but let's let's go D4. I'm either going to play the Tory, which I gave you a little bit of a talk over, or I'm going to play the Collie. Now, what's that saying? Connection? Don't say me the connection gone. You got to make a move, Fizzy. You got to make a move. Muting now, good good boy. Yeah, make sure you mute so you don't hear my ideas. That is very kind of you, Fizzy. Okay, so my opponent's going e6. Now, I'm going to stick. I'm going to keep it flexible. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the collie or the tori. But by playing knight to f3, I keep both options open. Bishop g5 will be the tori. And if I play e3, it will be the collie. So I'm thinking here, I'm probably going to go bishop g5. Oh, my opponent has done the Dutch. Can you Adam and Eve it? Okay, so actually, against the Dutch, which I know a little bit about, the Tory with bishop g5 is a pretty good option. So I'm going to go for bishop g5 here. Because I have faced this many times before. So it is a bit cheeky, isn't it? It is a little bit cheeky. e4 was a gambit I tried in another long play game. But bishop g5 is, is sticking with the Tory setup. So it doesn't make much sense to go e3 there. Because I only think the collie, in my view, when you put your pawns like this and create half the pyramid, is good when black plays d5. Otherwise, I don't like playing the collie. I prefer playing the tori. Um, I basically like I like um, I like playing openings where they rhyme because it's easier for me to say. Um, Biz and Raz, I'm sure you'll get a game next time. I, I'll play you again, but it didn't seem to work that time. I don't know why. Um, I tried my best, and sometimes we fail. Charlie the Ginger Cat is saying, can you do the Cockney accent, Simon? Um, I'm just trying to do the Cockney accent now. Can you add a minute? No, why, why I can't do it? Yes, mate, I can do the Cockney accent. A bit of, uh, bit of uh, you want to come down my pub and have a bit of a pint, have a bit of cider, maybe, you know, maybe have a game of a pool, a bit of a laugh, get, you know, make sure you wear your suit and whistle. Get me on the dog and bone, and we we have a, we have a blast, mate. We have a blast, you know. Can you Adam and Eve it? Okay, that is kind of my Cockney accent. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's apparently the way they talk in East London. Even though uh, I'm not sure about that, a part of London. Okay, now I've actually faced this move before, and a tricky little move here, and a move that we all love is h4 just trying to keep my bishop on this square and as side chest delia produced look at this side chest delia made this lovely picture of me in my past pushing harry up the board there i love that picture it's very scary but i love it uh da, 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 da. <laughs> Okay, so I'm trying to read some questions here. But h4 is a normal move here because I'm supporting my Tory bishop. Can't be a bad move. Now, Void is saying, let me just try to answer this as I've got a bit of time. Sorry, people, got to try to address. Hi, Simon, I have a question. I'm a 1400 ELO player. Started six months ago playing chess. Well, you're doing very well if you're 1400 after six months. I feel like I increased my skill even a bit more playing your French repertoire. The next opening I will play, I thought I'm going about going to 1500, 2000 open. What do you think? Does it make sense to play the stronger class open? Yes, as Side Chess Delia and other people are saying, go for it. The way I improved from a weaker player to a stronger player was when I was younger, like 10, 12. I'd always play in the top section at tournaments. So I'd always play in the open, even though I could play two sections below. But you have to be strong, because if you do that, you are going to get horrible scores. You're going to lose a lot of games. So I would I've started off getting in, you know playing these weekend chess tournaments in England, where there'd be uh, you know 
you play over the weekend six games and I'd start getting one out of six I'd lose like five games but it's the best way to improve the best way to improve is by playing better players you can't improve by playing weaker players in actual fact you will um, you will you won't improve but you might actually become worse you because you, you'll play you'll try to play systems that only suit weaker players always trying to play above you but always try to learn if you're serious about getting better but also prepare yourself to lose a lot of games but as long as you learn from them it's okay right back to the game so my opponent's sensibly moved his knight out and I'm now going to develop my knight to this square uh, I'm just thinking do I put my knight here or do I put it here does it matter I think I'm going to put it on d2 and what is my main idea so basically you know when you're playing moves you should always have an idea behind the moves that you're playing why did I put my knight on d2 because one of the main ideas for white against the Dutch in general the Dutch opening is to get rid of the knight so play bishop takes f6 and then play this important move e4 now e4 is a main move a main main move against the Dutch so this is why I want my knight here because I want to prepare this move e4 but at the moment I, I think my idea is to maybe take that knight off because the knight on f6 this one here is defending that square so it's making it harder for me to play e4 so my main idea is just to go bishop takes knight and then I will be able to play my break in the center e4 and what I'm trying to achieve I'm trying to swap off this pawn for this pawn so the green pawns if you can imagine them coming off the board that helps white because then this guy can come to d3 and as in the lessons that I was showing earlier the bishop on d3 has a great attacking route then towards the weak h7 square but in order for that bishop that dead dead piece at the moment to become good I need to get the pawn on f5 out of the way otherwise the pawn on f5 will be blocking my bishop on d3 so this is kind of my plan my plan is to take the knight and then play e4 so if I was black here and the way I play this position as black like I the main sort of thing I say to improve at chess is if you're constantly thinking about your own ideas so I've just explained my own ideas here but what's the other thing you can immediately do to get better is to stop your opponent's ideas if I was black I would have seen that e4 is an idea and I would have fought a ways to stopping that so if I was black I'd have probably put the pawn on d5 just to stop that one because now the move d6 does nothing to stop my plan so I'm gonna do my plan I can't go e4 straight away because it's only defended by one piece and my opponent has two pieces defending that square but if I take the knight first I will be able to play e4 next move and generally e4 is a very good move to play against the Dutch so maybe d6 was a typical mistake the first mistake by my opponent who um, was not thinking about his opponent's ideas and not trying to restrain his ideas but it's still very interesting because maybe my opponent is going to try to play e5 in this position and do a counter strike which may maybe maybe his his idea so if he does go e5 I'm trying to think about his ideas what am I going to do well I think then I'm going to try to take on e5 and if he takes back with a pawn I need to think where my bishop is best please that place because before I do any tactics you need to place your pieces on the best square so where does that bishop then best placed it's not placed best placed on d3 but it would be best we placed like on c4 because then I stop my opponent from castling so thank you so much by the way for the donation uncooked Bert uh, who's just donated seven pounds that's very very kind of you thank you thank you cheers cheers for the donation and uh, you know the thing that I'm trying to do as I say to do this more regularly is build up subscribers so if you really want to support me do subscribe to the channel it's if you're Amazon Prime it's free you can subscribe for free per month um, if you have Amazon Prime or otherwise it's five dollars I think per month but you do get all all my videos uh, in the archive to do that okay so 
black has played this e5 move now this is a normal idea but it's normally a lot safer to do this when the black king is castled because now if you look at all the light squares and this is what i'm looking at there's a lot of holes on the light squares so my idea is first of all develop so i push my ideas through but also stop my opponent doing the things he wants to do so i could go bishop c4 straight away but that gives my opponent another possibility if i play bishop c4 straight away my opponent could go pawn takes e4 when i normally want to continue knight takes e4 and then he may have the move d5 and i don't want him moving this pawn on d6 because if he gets his pawn there in any position, it would block up my diagonal. So what I'm going to do first is take here to remove the possibility of him going d5. So this is why this is why I'm I'm capturing that pawn first. And then if he goes pawn takes, I will get my bishop to this diagonal, which does the two main things. It continues my development, continues my own ideas, it restrains my opponent's ideas. If you can make a move which does both of these things continue your own ideas, restrain your opponent's ideas, that is a good move to play. Well, of course it is. Um, and, well, I don't think I need to think too much here because my next move is, is this logical developing move, bishop c4. Why do I need to think? I stop my opponent castling and I develop a piece. And I'm now already thinking about my next plan. Well, my next plan is where do I put my king? And also, can I take advantage of his king being in the middle? Now, I could castle kingside. But also, I kind of like the idea of trying to get a rook to the open file. So, in order to do that, I need to move my queen. So, I'm just thinking logically, logically. Where does my queen want to go? There's nothing wrong with putting it on e2. It supports my center. But maybe a more aggressive square, if I can get it, if I go c3 and put my queen on b3, is on b3. Because then I have double control, you know, with my queen here, double control there of this long diagonal. So I'm thinking maybe c3, queen b3, castles queen side is a great way to continue. Because then I've developed all of my pieces and I have a lovely structure and then I can attack. So that's my main idea. I mean, if I want to be a bit quicker, I could just go queen e2 and castles because that does save a tempo. And my queen on e2 is still going to be good because it is lined up against his king. So I may have ideas of pawn takes pawn and knight takes e5 there. I mean, I might also want to try something like knight g5, but generally I don't want to start getting involved with complex tactics until I've done the foundations develop my minor pieces, knights and bishops, control the center, get castled. Only then will I think about more complex ideas. Okay, so my opponent has played knight c6, and if my opponent can maybe get rid of my bishop with an idea like knight to a5, then he will be okay, because this is his main problem, this bishop. So, if I go c3, let's calculate this. We've got to think about our opponent's ideas. Um, if I go c3, my opponent plays knight to a5. What do I do there? Now, if I go queen a4 check, you've got to back up all your positional ideas with tactics and calculation. This is, you know, you can't get better at chess unless you do this. So if I go c3, knight a5, queen a4 check, so pawn here, knight here, because my opponent wants to get rid of this bishop, You've got to think about your opponent's best moves, always. Ooh, Queen here, check, he will go c6. Thank you so much, David, for subscribing. And uh, again, this is one way you can support me is by subscribing. The more you subscribe, the more I can do this, and the, the better you make me feel, baby. <laughs> okay, so do I have a good move there? Otherwise, maybe c3 and queen a4 is just too slow. My opponent's also threatening to go b5 in that position. So I could castle queenside, and then he goes b5. I don't like it. I think I'm a little bit slow. Now, maybe then I should be going queen to e2, knight a5, and castling. Thank you so much, 
Ronart Lab for subscribing as well. You've been very generous with your subscriptions today. Thank you so much. That's very kind. Cheers. Very kind of you. So queen e2, knight a5, castles queenside. And then if he goes knight takes c4, I can go queen takes c4. I still have this idea here. Can my opponent then break this thing? I've got two knights versus two bishops, but my knights are okay. So if he, if I was black, I'd try queen e7 with the idea of going bishop here. So I'm just thinking ahead here. What do I do after queen e7? I could then try knight g5, but it doesn't threaten anything. So I'm not sure if that's really working. So maybe if I go queen e2, knight a5, I should look at doing something in the center. So let's have a look. Queen e2, knight a5. What if I take on f5 straight away? And the point then is, if bishop takes f5, I have knight takes e5. This looks much better way to do it because my queen then has access through towards his king. So that looks like a good plan. I mean, also, I mean, as Mickey Dead guys are saying, a good idea here might be something like a3 and bishop a2, but it seems a little bit slow. And it doesn't, it only stops my opponent's plans, but it doesn't continue my own plans. So I'd rather, I think I'm liking the idea of queen e2 because I want a castle queenside because my rook on an open file has to be good. It brings more pieces to the attack. I'm also maybe threatening to take his pawns, open up towards his king. So this to me now looks like the best idea, queen e2. And it's just very logical. I'm logically working out all my ideas. But you can see what I'm doing basically, I'm thinking of the positional things I want to do that help me and stop my opponent. When I see an idea, I'm backing that idea up with basic calculation considering my opponent's what I consider my opponent's best moves. If I can't see good uh, a, a good line for me, I'm giving up on that line, I'm looking at another option. So I gave up on c3, but as I told you before, my second option was queen e2 because it helps me castle. And this may be better because I now possibly have a threat of pawn takes pawn, and in some positions knight takes e5. Now, this looks correct, and I want a castle. So what can my opponent do here? Well, queen e7 now is maybe a move. I mean, I could have tried knight g5 last move. I could have gone really tactical with knight g5. Um, but I don't know. I, I kind of felt I should develop my pieces first. The problem is, if I go knight g5 now, he has knight d4. So I think black should be, again, trying to stop this bishop. So how can black do that? Well, I think queen e7 and bishop e6 looks natural, yeah? So this is what I should now be thinking of. I should have a plan prepared for this. Because if black cannot stop this bishop's diagonal, his king will never escape to freedom. So queen e7 looks very natural. Queen e7. So what am I going to do against queen e7? Well, the first thing I'm thinking of is pawn takes pawn. But after bishop takes, maybe that helps him develop. So... Queen e7, the second thing is what if I castle queenside? Bishop e6, and then if I play pawn takes pawn, I've gained a tempo. If he goes bishop takes pawn then, I can go knight b3, and my rook on d1 will stop him castling queenside, and my bishop on c4 will stop him castling kingside, so his king will be stuck there. So what I'm thinking now, if queen e7, I'll continue castling, so try to follow this variation. Queen side, of course, because my rook on d1 does a good job. And then if bishop e6 there, I will take on this square because I want to annoy his bishop. If he doesn't take back, I win a pawn, so he will take back. And then there, again, I'm thinking about my opponent's plan. He probably wants to castle queen side, so how do I stop that? I move my knight. Maybe I even move my knight into the center. That's an even better square than b3 because my rook on d1, my rook will be on this square then, will stop him castling. And you can see again how I'm just thinking of logical, simple plans that are aimed. Okay, so my opponent's gone aggressive, a move I did not consider. He's trying to start some kind of funny business here, but I've got to say, does a move like this really deserve to work when his king's in the middle? 
when he hasn't developed his pieces? No, in my opinion, it doesn't. You know, if you're going to start tactics, you should probably only start tactics from a position of strength. And black is not in a position of strength here. So why can't I just continue my plan of castling queenside? Because that defends c2, I defend his threats, and I continue my idea. So I think I'm just going to do that. I don't see any reason why not. So let's do it. Why not? Because now my rook is another piece that I can consider for the attack. And now that I've completed my development, I've completed the foundations. I've got my knights and bishops out. I've got my king safe. I've got my controller center. Now I can start thinking about tactics because like I say, tactics really only work from a position of strength. Hello to past pawn who's also joined in uh, the stream. Um, and I have to agree with Tam Hass, who has said you can't really attack just with one piece. You need, you need normally to create a successful attack, you need three pieces attacking. One piece is very doubtful to, to, to uh, do the job. Three pieces is the key. So what is what am I gonna do now? Well, I think now it's time to try and kill him now I've got everything set up I mean it's like you know if you go into battle um, who's more likely to win in battle like some guy who runs onto the battlefield who's out of shape and naked or someone who's dressed up for battle with a sword and a suit of armor I'm going back to the old days the person who's better prepared is more likely to succeed and that's what we can say um, with this CWM Rage is saying, I think your settings are okay. I'm really sorry I didn't get to play you in a game, uh, Rage. It could be a thing with chess.com, it's possible. Uh, but I promise uh, that I will give you another opportunity next time uh, and we'll get a chance. It could be a chess.com thing. Uh, sorry about that. You will get another chance. I do promise, promise that one. Okay, so now my opponent's played C5. So what's he trying to do? And this is the next thing. Uh, where we're, we're, we've got to always think, what's he trying to do? And I don't see that. I mean, he's defending his knight. Maybe his main idea is to try to bring the queen over here into the attack. But this is very slow. My bishop still stops his king from castling. And I could now move my knight, of course, but isn't, you know, I could move my knight to this square, but I want to, I mean, in order to checkmate him, I'm going to need to open up the position. Now that my king is quite safe and that his king is not safe, I should be opening up the position. So the first thing I'm thinking here is pawn takes f5. Does this work? Well, let's have a look. Now I've got a basis on calculation. Bishop takes f5, knight takes e5, when he probably has to play queen to e7. And I need to find a good move there in that position. So again, tactics are, are often key. And my opponent has a bit of pressure against this now. I mean, a sensible move here, it, I mean, I'm thinking also about just getting rid of this knight. I can always go C3 or A3, but this seems to me like there should be a tactic here, a, a tactical way to do. Um, knight takes E5, bishop takes E5. There's another way to do this. Pawn takes here. But then queen e7. If I think, if you think you have a good position anyway, you don't need to sacrifice. I don't. I think this should be a simple way to do this. Pawn takes pawn looks natural. Now the other thing about this is if bishop takes, then knight to e4. Now we're now we're getting to the truth of the matter. Um, because my rook is unleashed about against his queen, and my knight on e4 can try to dive into d6. That looks like it's winning. So I want to open up the position, very, very logical, because if I open up the position, his king is going to be a real target. I just need to open up lines. Everything is set for the battle. So pawn takes pawn, bishop takes, and now knight takes e5 is interesting, but I have knight e4 as a very good backup, threatening knight d6 check and his queen. So that looks very good for me. Now I'm going to play it. I'm not even worried about queen here because even he only has one check. If he ever plays queen there and takes there, I just go king b1. And that's going to take him three moves to get a check. In the meantime, I am perfectly positioned now to kill that king. Um, 
and this is the most principled way to play. I mean, I could have tried something like knight here, but knight here, you've got to think of your opponent's best defensive moves. His queen is attacked, he just moves his queen, and he defends the threat. And I don't want to put my knight on the side of the board. I want my knight coming into the center because his king is in the center, so I've got to move my pieces towards where his king is. Logical, you know, let's move towards where his king is. Find a target to attack and aim for it. This is the only way to go. So this is what we're gonna do here. Um, okay, so I think my opponent's in quite a lot of trouble now because I have knight e4 and I have knight e5. I have my two knights coming into the game here. And how does he defend against both of them? Not easily. So how does he do this? Um, not easy to defend against the threats here. And and also it's it's quite easy for me to play very easy for me to play so I think black is in really really uh, serious trouble here knight e4 is coming and knight e5 and I'll be honest you know the moves I played uh, as you can see I've explained each of my moves not too complicated what has my opponent done wrong he's allowed me to do my plan of e4 which I know is a mistake if you're a Dutch player. So you've got to know what you're trying to achieve when you play a certain opening and also what you're trying to stop. My opponent maybe did not understand the strength of this E4 move. We'll have a look at this later on. But then I'm just trying to do very logical, sensible moves. And even if the game looks ends in some tactical onslaught, it's been very logical. It's come from a logical backing. Okay, so bishop here. So I thought this move probably failed because of knight e4 and then knight here check when I'm going to win the bishop. So why can't I go knight e4? I'm not even going to look at knight takes e5 now because I don't need to because knight to e4 looks even stronger. Knight to e4. Okay, so my opponent's queen has to move. If he goes queen c8, I win the queen. If he goes anywhere else, I go knight d6. So I'm under, I am think I think this is probably just winning. Another piece comes in and another piece comes into the attack. So this is very, very, very logical um, way to play. Um, okay, just looking at the chat now. Um, so... Let's have a look at the chat. Now, I have to say, there won't be any more time after this game to play another one. The stream's coming to an end after this game, because. but I will be streaming again tomorrow. I'm doing a lesson with Ye Bjorn tomorrow, the second lesson I've done with him. And I think I'm streaming also on Friday as well. So Friday, what am I doing on Friday? I'm doing puzzles on Friday. So I'm streaming every day this week, basically. But we... Um, there's no more no more going on today because it's been a, quite a lot of lessons today already and I can't bloody stream all day at this rate unless I was playing Blitz it's so easy just to play Blitz but I did that yesterday quite unsuccessfully so uh, I, I need to punish myself by doing some lessons <laughs> today but I think this position here is quite easy to see that now it's only move 13 but um uh, this is uh, this is winning for for thing. Goodbye. Who wants to be a banana? I mean, if you're only here to play me at chess, then I, you know I'm quite happy if you disappear. It doesn't doesn't bother me at all. You know, you, I, I can't I can't promise to play everyone a game, can I? I mean, there's a hundred, there's two hundred and thirty eight of you. If I try to play every every one of you a long play game, I'll be here until I'm sixty. And I've got better things to do than that, and you should you should do as well. Okay, now. Maybe bishop d7 was a possibility, but then my opponent's king was very, very weak. So the simple way to play is now to check and just win the piece. And if you've got a, if you've got a choice between a simple way and a complex way, then just pick the simple way. Because, you know, if you play the complex way, you might miscalculate. Uh, simple is always good. Even though, you know, I'm known to be a very complicated player, simple is good. And I'm just going to go for this one why not and I'm just gonna pick up this bishop and I still have an attack I still have the good bishop here I'm not worried about this check here because I can always go king b1 and I think my king 
is quite safe on b1. So let's keep it simple. Let's just go knight takes bishop, picking up that one. Now maybe my other knight can come in. I can try to get my knight to d7. So this is the check, but I'm not worried because king b1, my opponent, his pieces are not good enough. My bishop is now controlling this square, threatening this square, and I have my knight coming to e5, or maybe my knight can come into e6 and I'm still attacking. My rook can come into d7 um, and I'm a piece up. So this is probably now uh, game over. I think my opponent just got in a bit of trouble in the opening. Uh, that was that was that was all. Infinitive flash chess. Simon, I have an urgent, important question. Is Harry the H pawn your favourite? Yes, he is. If he is your favourite, where is the emote? Well, that is a very good question. And if Cy Chestelia is still here, Cy Chestelia has created my emotes. But I think I've got about another four or five open ones now, which I can create. Cy Chestelia did create. A, uh, a, a one for Harry. Okay, I've got to take this knight, but he's not going to checkmate me just with a queen. It is not going to work. He did create an h1, but Twitch rules did say that you can't have an emote which is a letter. Um, so he did create um, one, but uh, Twitch rejected the Harry one. So I don't know what we're going to do. We might have to create another one which is just, just a pawn. You know, literally a pawn, but it probably can't have an H on it. You can't have letters in an emote. So we're going to need to think about that. And hopefully Cy Chestelia can create some more for me. Um, it'd be great if you could because we do have more that, that needs to be done now. Okay, anyway, back to the game. So my opponent has taken here. Now, I'm two pieces up, so I think it's very easy. Let's keep it simple and I'm just going to now just try to get rid of his queen because I'm two pieces up two pieces is going to win any end game position so uh, we'll go here and if he doesn't take my queen my queen will come in with a big attack as well so uh, pretty much game over at this moment in time infinitive flash chess yeah it is ridiculous but we're, we're, we're I mean what can we do you know now I could go uh, queen to b3 again but should I play for checkmate now should we try to finish in style? I still think my king's quite safe, so let's play for checkmate. Because I have queen d6 is uh, checkmate. Make it a pawn with hair. Maybe a pawn with hair would be good. Okay, is queen d6 mating? I think that should be mating, surely. Yes, it's going to be checkmating three moves now. Um, his king is in a mating net, and my queen will come over and finish the job at the moment. Um, hey, Fiona! Fiona, Fiona! Hello, Fiona! How are you doing? Um, Fee and Chetta, uh, the one and only Fiona, ha has joined in the chat just as I'm about to finish the stream. Timing is impeccable, as always. Um, so, hello, Fee and Chetta, um, who is, yeah, who, are, are you in South Africa at the moment? Uh, maybe uh, well we know Fiona who, who basically when I, when I started doing these streams and Fiona we, um, we 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 did a lot of these ones together and hopefully we can do some more together of these streams soon but I, I think Fiona is in South Africa having a bit of a holiday because she's been working for I think about two months non-stop she's a hard worker so she deserves a holiday in South Africa um, which I'd love to. I'd love to get a holiday in South Africa anywhere soon. Uh, but hello to Fiona. So I hope it's going well. And I hope you're enjoying your time in South Africa indeed. Um, and yeah, okay. Well, um, well, I'll try to get Fiona on a stream. Can you do a stream, Fiona? Uh, yeah, very hard worker. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I was being nice to you, okay? Being nice, if you get my meaning. Would you be able to stream next week, Fiona? I'm trying to sort out my stream schedule um, for next week. I was gonna, I've got a, okay, if anyone's interested, what we're doing, it's below here, the schedule. If you go where it says schedule, you'll be able to look. Um, I'm basically doing a lesson tomorrow. Oh, you can have a look yourself. I can't be bothered to explain. Next week, I think on Wednesday is my rivals Ooh, match with John nice Bartholomew. Thank you, by the way, for subscribing, Rufus and Doofus. 
Um, next week, Wednesday, I think I'm doing uh, uh, basically a match with John Bartholomew, a rivals one. I think it'll be Wednesday. I'm waiting for confirmation. I'll let you all know. I'm also going to do a rivals match against Lawrence Trent, but hopefully I can get streaming with Fiona. Um, I have terrible internet here. Uh, okay, I'll send you a message. So, all right, maybe just have your holiday, Fiona. Just chill out. Just chill out. That's probably better. By the way, thank you, um, Fizzy Piz. <laughs> uh, who has subscribed today I think for um, uh, for playing a game um, and thank you for the game I mean the main problem that Black had here let's have a look at the major points so I've tried to play this opening that I've been looking at for chess base and the main problem occurred when I played knight bd2 now in chess you always need to look at your opponent's ideas and see what they're planning. And if you know that a main idea against the Dutch is e4, as black here, you have two ways to stop me doing this. After d6, I can eliminate a defender of that square and get my pawn here. And already, I think white is better here. White has an advantage now. And we saw that my moves after this were pretty simple. So when I've had this position as black myself, I've either played d5, stopping e4 so we go into a stone wall or maybe a more interesting move is to put your knight onto e4 immediately so that you just stop the white pawn uh, coming to e4 yourself and this is a more interesting move bringing the knight to e4 so that's what i would have played to stop this this plan in the game all that i was thinking here were the natural moves where do i want to put my one undeveloped piece i want to put it on c4 but I don't want d5 to come, so let's eliminate d5, develop the piece. And now I've got to think where my king wants to go, queen side. So where's my queen best place? Lined up against the king. And I have to say, you know, fizzy piss. Uh... Just the one move. I mean, you, you played you played well, but you just got in trouble earlier on in the opening. And that's all you need to do. You need to understand the openings, and, and you, you struggled a little bit in this one. Um, and the way it went, well, it was quite easy for me to play because now that I have development, I need to clear open lines, so I need to get pawns out of the way. And that's all I do, and get my pieces the best squares and create frets. I'm creating frets here, and these frets manage to win a piece of me and win the game. So thank you for the game there. Uh, that was a fun little game. And I have to say, I'm going to stop this.